Hi everyone, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I will be showing you or telling you about the blocks uh, you can see behind me, and especially this one. Those those blocks, those are just string ones, but I would like to talk about this one. Every time I'm making something on the muslin as a foundation, like those string blocks. Uh, when I trim them around to the size, you have certain pieces of, you know, leftovers. So uh, if that leftover is big enough, I will keep it. This is how it looks. So I will keep anything which is at least an inch-ish wide. And I had quite a lot of those and I've been doing a lot of projects on the muslin. And you, you could have used maybe some uh, thin cotton for the same reason or even do on the paper and then you trim it and you have those leftovers. Uh, and I was thinking, how can I reuse those? Because it's again, it's a lot of fabric, and you kind of you, you took time to put it on something already. So I have used the same technique I used for uh, so, uh, some time before um, when I was making a bag for my son from leftovers from his jacket. <laughs> so I used one inch strips to do like half quilt as you go type of thing because it still need to go on the back batting and, and, and have a backing to be quilted. But I've used those strips to put those things together and make blocks out of those. So you can see this is how it looks at the back. You cannot see strips because a strip is one inch and I've used quarter inch uh, allowance to sew it. So obviously you cannot see strip on the back, but it now you have a nice flat block uh, from those scraps. So today's tutorial is about how I've made those blocks, uh, some tips and tricks how to put it together and also what am I going to make out of those? <laughs> and because those blocks are made from scraps, from the blocks which have been made with scraps, you know all of those string quilts are made from scraps, I'm calling it a double scrapper. So let's get started. Okay, so what idea I've got for those uh, scraps? First of all, I kind of sorted them by length because I will be linking linking them together. Obviously, I, I don't want to lose uh, too much fabric if I don't have to, uh, to kind of shorten them. Uh, that's the biggest batch of those uh, longest ones, which is great. And um, I've pulled out from my scrap basket uh, all the solid colors uh, strips. Again, random colors, but they're all solid. And what I will do, those are two and a half inch um, strips. I will cut them to one inch and I will try to um, link those strips, uh, you know, like um, quilt as you go technique. Uh, and that's because, you know, I've got those two layers here already and they are very narrow. Uh, so this layer is a muslin I was uh, sewing my previous uh, project on. And they are very narrow. So if I now want to so those two together and I will have all of those small small seams it's going to be very bulky and hard to work with but if I sew it with the technique of the um, quilt as you go th there is not so much bulk there because they will kind of butt themselves next to each other like this once that strip is uh, sewn on both sides so I hope that will work so like I said, first of all, I will cut some of those strips to one uh, one inch and I will start sewing, we'll see how it looks. Okay, I didn't cut too much of those strips because I want to first check whether my idea will work. So um, I will put my quarter inch uh, foot now on my machine and well, we will see if it works. Okay, so after the first first round, I can see straight away it will work very nicely. Those two seams on the back, they're just butting each other. So that will make a very nice uh, flat block when I finish. So 
This got about uh, 10 inches, a little bit more than 10 inches in the length. So what I will try to do is um, link them all together and square them up to 10 inches. So with the long ones that's quite easy because obviously I just need to add them one after another. Now with the shorter ones what I will do, I will link them together to get to the 10 inch here and then I will start adding at the bottom those longer ones. Uh, to again square it up to the 10 inches. So I think what I will actually do is start sewing from the smallest ones because uh, I don't want to use up all the long ones where I will need them to add at the bottom. So I don't have any more of those very very small ones. So what I will do now, I will link them together and then I can see if I can add maybe a little bit of, uh, of those ones at the bottom to kind of bring it a um, little bit wider and then like a lock cabin, try to go from side to side to add longer and longer strip. I just want to save as much fabric as I can uh, without trimming anything. So let's see if that will work. Okay, so I've ironed it uh, flat and if your, uh, if your seams on the back kind of overlapping they should, they should just butt up together because it's a one inch strip, if you take half an inch from both it should be uh, half an inch uh, in the middle here so obviously your two quarters should give you the same um, uh, dimension but if they do not um, look flat then just narrow down your, your seam a little bit so let's see what we can do here. So I'm just going to straight up uh, one of the sides because that's where I want to add uh, another strip. So this one is quite long. Let's see if I can have something shorter. Yeah, that will go nicely here. Or maybe it would have been better from this side. Yeah, this side goes better. Okay, so that will fit nicely here. Good to have an iron board just next to you for that project because there will be ironing involved at all times. So, okay, now I shouldn't have added um, strip on this side because now I I cannot add another one. Uh, actually, I, will, I, I can add another strip of the fabric here as well. That's not the end of the world. But yeah, for the next one, I will remember that the edge one should stay without even adding the at the bottom. Okay, so let's see if I can match another piece of strip. So yeah, so this now fits much better without kind of losing um, too much fabric. Let's try this one. That's even too short. One more. Yeah, that's one even better for that. So now I will add another strip. Let's what could I have? Let's go with pink one. So I can possibly add now another one to the side and then maybe this one will then go at the bottom or maybe the other way around yeah I'll do this way and then this one will go at the bottom it will fit then and you kind of have an idea now where I'm going with it so I will be making them bigger 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 until I can square them up to either 10 or 10 and a half inch let me go with this ones again uh, 10 because that's how those strips are long 
so 10 inches and uh, I do not know how many of those blocks I can make out of it but it kind of feels like quite a lot so um, I will carry on and I will show you what those blocks came out like um, at the end so uh, if you're doing anything with strings on the muslin um, make them bigger than you need and then you can you know after you square them up because you're still gonna have to square them up just make the edges a bit bigger than you think uh, or than you're planning then you can use your uh, scraps that way to make uh, more blocks which are much quicker because obviously um, you're just linking those uh, bits together rather than individual pieces So this is how the final block looks like uh, now um, squared up to the 10 inches. Uh, I did starch it before I started uh, ironing for the last time when I had pulled pieces in and all of those of cuts are now going back to my bucket with uh, remnants for another block. So just to have a look at a few of those blocks you can see here is quite a lot of those link uh, strips uh, it depends you know what the scrap was looking like there's just one here because I had the big pieces uh, so they will they will really vary depending from which project I had the cutouts uh, but if you have a look at the back of that uh, you can see because I'm using one inch strip and I'm using quarter inch uh, seam uh, come together here for the nice flat surface uh, so I really like that effect here. It looks, you know, looks really neat here. So as you can see, I've made quite a lot of those. There's another batch I've got uh, on the side here. I haven't counted, but I think I probably made like maybe 30 or 40 of those. While I was just stashing and sorting out my uh, other cupboards, I also found a piece of uh, um, muslin, which I forgot I've got, and I made some like just, you know, normal string uh, blocks as well. So uh, I did cut them to the 10 inches as well and I think I would like to put it together with this kind of to make some sort of design. So I will carry on finishing off my uh, cuttings of, you know, squaring up the remaining blocks and I will pop it on the design board and let's have a look what we can uh, create from those two type of blocks. Okay, I finished all my blocks and I have managed to make 53 of them or even a little bit more uh, 53 last count so the layout uh, because they are 10 inches obviously nine and a half finish so I was thinking uh, six by seven or six by eight I'll just re put it out and see how it uh, looks so I finally agreed on what layout I would like to have and uh, instead of making rectangle I decided to make a square so the layout is six by six and I actually made enough blocks to make two of those squares, so the second one might be a little bit different. But this is the layout I'll be working with uh, today. I have cut extra 10 inch uh, strips now because obviously I will be linking all of those uh, blocks the same way as I did the initial blocks. And um, the color one will go wherever, but those ones with the strings I would like to frame with the black one. Uh, so I need to kind of uh, mark those ones before I get it to the machine so kind of I don't mix, mix it up. Uh, wherever the black strip needs to go needs to be kind of attached of the, uh, you know, the junction where it's going to be. So for example, I will need to put it here and I will need to put it here for this block then go with the black. Here I would like to have a just normal color so I will put color one. But here again I would like to have it framed. In the middle will be just normal color. Uh, so I didn't count how many strips I need uh, yet. I'm just going to pin the one I need to know where they go. And then if I run out of something, I'll just stop and cut a little bit more. So uh, let me pin those first and then I will get you to the machine. I will start uh, sewing them together. Okay, so I've placed all of my uh, black borders where I need them to be. 
uh, and uh, a same thing as I've put the black on the left side of the junction I've put the on the kind of on the rows it goes to the top of the block rather than bottom because I will be sewing from from left to right from top to bottom so that's that's why they need to be um, on those sides so first I can take just first column because to all of those blocks I need to attach obviously the first strip here and put the strip in between and then again attach the strip here put the strip in in between where that small strip is going to go in there will be a corner stone uh, where the black meeting I will put black corner stones and then obviously where other colors meeting I will just mix it up so I'm just collating from the top my first batch of blocks and I'll just put a pin <laughs> before I get to the machine I just put the pin which one is the side I'm going to start sewing from so that's where the strip is going to okay so those are my blocks my pin has been here to mark which way I need to start sewing and because there's nothing pin on this side that means uh, you know the color wise that means I can choose any strip I have caught I've got you know quite a few nice colors whatever I was using in initially uh, the most of them are here and they have been cut to size like I said to 10 inch length so I can just uh, crack on and uh, start sewing so the first color goes in but I'm just going to be paying attention that you know where those strips are I've ironed them all that they go inside so it's nice and flat surface here so I just need to make sure nothing kind of shifts uh, when I'm going to sew it. Here I need to add the strip going this way and a corner stone so I will try as much as I can to choose um, some contrasting colors to what maybe the strip was here and also uh, make sure that I don't have maybe the same color coming together so I've chosen here blue and the corner stone, which is yellow. So that's my next part here. This is all going to be chain piece. So uh, it's all going to be held by the thread. So you don't have to worry about it. It's going to shift. So next piece coming in. Again, nothing linked here. So I know I can just choose any color I want. I had the pink blue there. So let's go with brown here. Now I'm looking at the next block and I can see I've got that black a strip pinned here that means this black strip needs to go in here as a I've put on the wrong block if you can see it should have been pinned to this one but that's fine kind of that's why I've got my stack here next to me so I can see at any given time what's coming next so it's this one then if I've got black strip here then I need to put a black a uh, corner stone as well okay so that's the next block here strip is here already so in between as I mentioned I want to have a color ones but the corner stones needs to be black so let me choose something maybe pink and then black cornerstone okay so I finished that first kind of pass and go back on it because I almost forgot to put one of those strips in, in between so just go back and have a look you've got everything in the right places because once you've got that first column done properly then obviously you know here that you cannot put a big block you're gonna have to put the sm uh, small strip so that will lead you where you're going with it so just go back and see you are happy with the placement that you've got all of your strips in between and uh, in the right places okay I've got them all done correctly so I can now go and bring the next column and again I'm going to be stacking from top to bottom uh, and uh, bring it to the sewing machine and I will start linking to the first block uh, I kind of finished here so that's from that point should be easier because you already got the guidance here with those blocks 
I'm just finger pressing here. I'm not taking anything to the ironing. I will be ironing everything in one go when all quilt is finished. But if you feel more comfortable to iron in between, by all means do that. Uh, it's it's a preference rather than you know a must. So it's up to you how you like to go ahead with it. So now I'm linking those two together. And I will do that this, the same way all quilt until uh, it's all done and then uh, I will meet you back at the time when I've got all the columns sewn and we're going to start working on our rows. You could have noticed that in some points I was kind of a little bit struggling here where the fabric was pulling me on my uh, uh, laps. I mean, I'm used to, to this uh, type of process of sewing blocks together and I kind of work around it. But if it comes for you and it's too much that you've got just too many things to think or, you know, struggle with at the same time, uh, then don't do it that way. Just work on one block at a time. Uh, take a block, sew a strip put it away, take another block, sew a strip, or sew the maybe strip and, and just a uh, strip at the bottom and the cornerstone and make sets like that, put it back on the floor or your design wall and then uh, once you've got uh, that bit constructed you can quickly put the uh, kind of bigger chunks together. So just work with what you're comfortable with, you know, the, the, like I said, this is something I'm used to and I like doing it that way, but that's, that's again a preference, a uh, personal choice rather than a must have so work with what's easy for you so this is how my project looks uh, after I've chain piece all the columns so now I've got all of those rows to put together this is all held in between each of the rows uh, by thread because I was chain piecing uh, all of those blocks now normally I would just take it all to the sewing machine and start sewing other way around but I have to say because of a little bit of you know bulk there because we're working with the blocks made on mu muslin it was a little bit difficult to maneuver with all of those blocks around so what I will do I will just snip the threads between each of two pairs so one row will be uh, blocks and one row will be those uh, strips with this project is easy because we'll know exactly which way that we want the seams to go so I will show you when I get to the machine what I mean with that so let me quickly cut it and I will show you what I mean how they're supposed to look uh, to be ready to stitch on the other side. So I've got my first pair uh, to go uh, through and I will just put that uh, narrow bit on top of the bigger blocks, it's just I think it will be easier. So I will just go slower here to stitch to the junction and I will just uh, show you uh, uh, how we're going to make sure that the seams are going the right way. Okay, so I'm getting to that first point. So. I know that I want those seams always go inside to the uh, that strip I've been linking them with. So obviously, uh, if those ones are going in, then this uh, small square needs to go to the outside. And that's just the only rule you need to remember. They all will be the same way all along. Just double check if it's going inside. It is adjusted if it doesn't. It should naturally go that way because uh, kind of the fabric fits better that way so fabric will kind of guide itself that way but if it doesn't just uh, you know move it across and you will be able to nicely nest here but if it's not perfect don't worry about it either honestly this quilt is so uh, busy that you will not even notice any difference I will now work through all of the pairs like this to make sure I've got that one side done 
Uh, you can, if you like, take it after you've done uh, that first kind of stitching to uh, ironing board and open it up and iron here so you all then will be ready to add the next pair and uh, stitch it together. So the seams are very easy to remember here because you always want uh, those uh, muslin ones go to inside uh, where the strip is so it's not going to cause any issue whatsoever if you just cut it in the pairs like this. So let me crack on with the rest of the sewing and I will show you what uh, quilts I have uh, kind of prepared out of those. And here are my uh, quilts and a little bit of close-up how they came out. Uh, quite nice size, uh, you know, good lap quilt. Um, I really like the colors, how they came together. You know, I've used so many scraps there, but somehow they kind of uh, mash up nicely together and uh, allowed me to use up all of those scraps, which normally you probably have put in the bin. The project took, you know, quite a lot of time in the sense that uh, every time I did have a, a quilt I've made on the muslin, I had those bits and pieces uh, left. So if I had enough, I was putting those blocks together uh, as I was going. So uh, after each project, I could have made maybe four to five uh, blocks. And then I had some cutouts, which I was keeping for the following uh, project. I could do a few blocks again. So, you know, it's, it's good after project because you're using up your scraps straight away. And if you do it that way, you kind of, you don't have that uh, <laughs> scrap fatigue, what I call is, you know, there's only so much time or so much energy you have to uh, contribute towards the working with your scrap. So this is, this was very good project uh, in that way that, you know, you're only working on maybe three or four blocks at the time. And once you finish, once you've got enough blocks, the putting quilt together is quite a quick process. Thank you very much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it, uh, you know, you find it useful and maybe it gives you some ideas how to use up your own scraps uh, moving forward. Uh, check the description below as usual for some um, links to the uh, tutorials maybe I've mentioned and other resources. If you haven't subscribed so yet, I'll be grateful if you do. That uh, supports my channel and my work. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.